Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Robert Singer, Director of Neurovascular Therapeutics in the Section of Neurosurgery at Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center. And on behalf of Dr. Cliff Eske and our, and our entire team, I want to welcome you to this module on cavernous malformations. It's our hope that the following information will be helpful to you in understanding your care. You'll have plenty of time to discuss your questions at your virtual visit. What is a cavernous malformation? A cavernous malformation, or cavernoma, is a congenital blood vessel malformation that develops around eight weeks gestation. Errors in blood vessel formation are believed to be the reason they occur. These lesions will often leak and irritate the brain or spinal cord. This is an illustration of cavernous malformations in the brain. They have very tiny blood vessels leading to in and out of them, which can cause bleeding or leakage. They tend to have the appearance and consistency of a raspberry and are usually located in the cerebral hemispheres. Other locations include the brainstem and spinal cord. Some general information about cavernomas is included in this slide. They tend to occur equally in men and women Average age of presentation is around 30 to 40 years. Also, they can occur in the spinal cord, but this is very rare. A developmental venous anomaly, or DVA, is associated with a cavernoma in 25% of cases. And finally, an angiogram usually does not demonstrate these lesions, which are oftentimes found on MRI and CT scans. Cavernomas can present in a number of ways, including hemorrhage, seizure, headache, or progressive neurologic deficit. The decision to treat a cavernoma is usually weighed on a number of factors. The risk of hemorrhage, the size and location of the lesion, the age and health of the patient, and obviously the patient's preference. An alternative to surgical resection is expectant management. Most of the time, this includes frequent MRI scans. Radiation therapy is not recommended for cavernous malformations. When presenting for surgery to resect a cavernous malformation, a functional MRI scan is sometimes done prior to admission. When admitted for surgery, this usually occurs the day of an MRI is again obtained the day of surgery for intraoperative navigation. The time for surgery is variable and can range from two to four hours. General anesthesia versus an awake technique can be used depending on the location of the lesion. Patients are transferred to the special care unit. A post-operative MRI is obtained. Hospitalization is usually three to five days. Patients are given a follow-up clinic appointment usually in two weeks and MRIs are done three to six months after surgery. Risks associated with surgery for cavernous malformations include bleeding, infection, loss of neurologic function, stroke, hydrocephalus, which is poor circulation of spinal fluid, seizures or persistent seizures, and death. The overall risk profile of this procedure is quite low, and at Dartmouth-Hitchcock it is certainly well within the recommended standards. Again, thank you for watching this video. We hope that it will help you in your understanding of cavernous malformations and prepare you for your live visit, which will begin shortly. Please feel free to watch any other modules and contact us with any questions or feedback.